and welcome to day three of our sixth grade math review. It's going to get a little bit um, longer this evening. We've got four problems we're going to look at. If you've been following along on my website, AaronDaffron.com. If not, that's fine. Just go ahead and uh, just watch and we'll take a look at these problems one by one. It's going to start seeming pretty easy, but quite honestly, this could be confusing unless we really just kind of take it bit by bit. So let's take a look at this problem real quick. So it's this is number nine. Remember, we're dealing with the 2017 star test. And so we're looking at uh, item nine of the 2017 sixth grade star test, and it reads, Leon wrote an expression. And in case we're kind of confused, an expression is like an equation. It just has no equal sign. So these are all expressions because they have operations. They just don't have an equal sign. That's all it is. So Leon wrote an expression that is equivalent to, and then we have this right up here, uh, parentheses 30 plus 6, close parentheses, divided by 12. So really the biggest question is going to be, first let's figure out what exactly that is, and then we can try to figure out what is, what is equivalent to that. So first let's just take a look. This we're using our, please excuse me, dear Aunt Sally, that is the mnemonic that we're going to use for our order of operations. Remember, uh, parentheses always comes first, exponents always come second. Multiplication and division can go together. Um, it's whichever one comes first. Kind of shrink this down, 30 plus 6, that's 36. And we're left with 36 divided by 12, so that's going to equal 3. We need an expression that is equivalent to 3. So let's take a look at this first one real quick. Since we have division and a multiplication. Even though in our please excuse my dear Aunt Sally that the multiplication comes first, these are equal because they're inverse operations. So you always come whichever one comes first, left. That dot is really a multiply. And so let's just take it one at a time. 36 divided by 3, that makes 12. Multiply that by 4, and that's going to make 48. So it looks like it could work. And quite honestly, if you were to do this, if you were to put some parentheses around there, and if you were to put the 3 and the 4 together, watch, that would change everything. Because then we would have to do the multiplication first, and we would say 36 divided by 12. But it doesn't, so A is going to be incorrect. That equals 48. So it's extremely tricky, and that's why the order of operations is extremely important. Secondly, we've got a whole bunch of stuff working here. And so let me just see if I can erase uh, some of this to give myself a little bit more room. And I'll erase this as well. There we go. So let's take a look at B. I'm going to say that equals 48. So B is a little bit longer, but really you're just looking at 3 times 3 times 4 divided by 4 times 3. Now parentheses always comes first, so let's make sure we're taking care of this first. 3 times 3 times 4. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 4 is 36, so we've got 36 divided by 4 times 3. Now, if you had a parentheses here, then that would equal 3, because you do the 4 times 3 makes 12. 36 divided by 12 makes 3. But you don't have a parentheses there, which means we need to go in order from left to right, which means our division comes next. 36 divided by 4 is 9. Now we have to multiply the 3. That's going to make 27. So you see how it's so close, and those parentheses are so important. So that is not going to work. Let's take a look at what we have here on C. And so C is going to be, not even going to include the correct numbers, but let's see what we have here. 5 times 6 plus 2 times 3. No parentheses, but we do have some multiplication and some division. And uh, we do have that addition, which we're going to ignore. The addition subtraction comes last. So let's just go left to right. Let's just start simplifying some of this. So 5 times 6, that makes 30. Plus, so that plus is going to come last. We're just going to leave that plus the way it is. Now we're going to do 2 times 3. So 2 times 3 is going to be 6 divided by 2 times... Uh, and that's actually not a 2. That's supposed to be a 3. Let me get that 3 going right there. 
We're going to have to do this one at a time. So this is going to be divided by three. There we go. You can't collapse any of these unless you have a parentheses. So divide by three times two times two. So now we're going to take care of this right here. We're going to say 30 plus six divided by three is two times two times two. So now we can go ahead and collapse this times two times two. So two times two is four, four times two is eight. So really what we're looking for is 30 plus eight because this collapses to the eight. Finally, we get into our addition. 30 plus eight is 38. We are really close, but we're still not where we need to be. So let's just hope D is our answer because we need it to equal three. And let me clear some of this off here, give myself a little bit of room. All right. D. A lot of work, but I have some parentheses, so we can collapse that pretty simple. Three times three times two times two. We're going to do all that at once. Then we're going to divide that by the product of three times two times two. So we can collapse both of those with the parentheses. Three times three is nine. 2 times 2 is 4, so I've got 9 times 4. I'm going to make that 36. We're going to divide that by, let's see, we've got uh, 3 times 2 is 6. Times 2 is going to make 12, so look at that. I've got 36 divided by 12, which is what we ended up having up here. We just made the 36 with the 30 plus 6, so that is going to be our answer. Our answer is D. So that is a very tricky one, a lot of work, and if you're just trying to eyeball it without using your please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, it's easy to get it wrong. Let's take a look at number two. That was a lot of work for our very first problem for this evening. Let's see if number two is a little bit easier. It is going to be a little bit easier. This is prime factorization, and they even give you the number. The number is 90. When I taught this as a sixth grade teacher, I always thought of it as a Christmas tree. You're going to take 90, and you see they've already given you two of the factors. You're just missing this one, but let's just go ahead and start with 90. When in doubt, always divide by two, right? So if it's even, uh, you're thinking what two factors can make 90? So it could be 45 and 2. When you hit a prime number, uh, a number that only has two factors, one in itself, you're going to circle it. So that's where the Christmas tree comes in because it makes me think of like the ornaments on a Christmas tree. So 45 is definitely not prime. I can do it a few different ways. I can do 15 and 3. So that 3 is going to be prime and my 15 is going to be 3 and 5. So that's, boom, I've got 2, 3, 3, 5. Um, the reason I said I could do it many different ways because if you did 90 and if you did your... Uh, you're 45 and 2, but maybe you didn't think 3 and 15. Maybe you thought 9 and 5. Well, guess what? You're going to end up with the exact same answer. That's the beauty of prime factorization. No matter how you cut it, it's going to be the same way. You've got 2. Let me listen right here. I've got 2, 3, 3, and 5. Those are uh, my prime factors. What if you didn't do 2 and 45? A lot of you, when you're looking at 90, you're not thinking 2 and 45. You're thinking... 9 and 10. Well, that actually makes it very simple because 9 is going to be 3 and 3. 10 is going to be 2 times 5. And look at that. Boom. It's nice and symmetrical. And you get the same four prime factors. 2, 3, 3, 5. Even if you don't do 9 and 10, what if you did 30 and 3? 30 and 3. And so you can get 10 and 3. And your 10 turns into 2 and 5. You could do a few more. You can do... Uh, 6 and 15 if you wanted to, but guess what? It's all going to end up the same. 2, 3, 3, 5. Now, how do you represent that in this right here? Well, we don't necessarily list it out, 2, 3, 3, 5. What we do is we put them in order. So you're going to put your 2 times. You don't put 3 times 3. You're going to show it as an exponent, times 3 squared. And then our missing number, there's that 5 right there. So it, this was a response item on the 2017 star test so you would have to bubble in the answer the answer was literally just five prime factorization the answer is five that's all you would need to do so that was fairly simple now we're going to look at 
properties of operations. And we're going to start doing some crazy stuff with equations between now and most of the rest of this review is we really start looking at algebra. We start looking at dividing both sides by a certain number, multiplying both sides by a certain number. And how do we know that we can do that? Well, what we're looking at here is uh, properties of operations. And in this case, we are going to be looking for something that's equivalent to this expression, y times 48. You can also just look at it, 48y. Uh, it's the same thing as y times 48. Remember when you have a number right up next to a letter and there's no operation in between, like right here, you can always say that that's going to be multiplication. And we're going to represent multiplication as a dot because we don't want to represent it as an x because an x can be times, but it can also be a variable. Just don't make your dot too low because then it looks like y.48. It's not a decimal. So it's kind of weird. Uh, just keep that dot kind of up in the middle and it'll be fine. Y times 48. But what we're looking at here is we are looking at what is called the distributive property. And if you might not necessarily know the name, you don't have to recognize this as some kind of vocabulary word, but it is so important. The distributive property, in this case we're looking at the distributive property of operations, says that you can take a number and multiply it by another number. So in this case, we are multiplying 48 and we're multiplying it by y. And then that would be equal to if we took this number, we don't know what y is. So let's say we take that 48 and we split it into two parts. Uh, so 48 could be 40 plus 8. Uh, if we wanted to, we could say 48 is equal to 20 plus 28. You could take that number and just split it up into two different add-ins, right? And if you were to multiply that same variable by both of those add-ins, so 48 times y is the same as 40 times y plus 8 times y. This is the distributive property, and it's going to be very helpful as you get into 7th grade and 8th grade, is taking a number like this and splitting it up into 48 is the same as 40 plus 8. So 48y is going to be the same as 40y plus 8y. Same thing with this. 48y, if you split it up into 20y plus 28y, however you want to split up that 48 into two different add-ins, it would work. And so if you don't believe me, let's just throw a number in here. Uh, let's say y equals 2. Nice and simple. We don't want to do 1 because sometimes things work with 1 when they're not supposed to. So let's just take uh, 48, multiply that by 2, right? So that's going to be 96. So what happens if I replace this y with a 2 right here? And I, re I replace this y with a 2. Well, my 40 times y now turns into 40 times 2, so that's 80. My 8 times y equals 8 times 2, that's 16. And guess what 80 plus 16 equals? 96. Same with this down here. 48 times y. If I took this 20 and I multiplied the 20 by the 2, I'm just going to substitute 2 for y. Added that to 28 times 2. Well, that's 40. That's 56. And guess what those two add together? 96. This is the distributive property of operations and it is extremely important. You're going to be doing a lot of this uh, when you get into polynomials and all kinds of uh, random stuff like that. So back to our problem on the sixth grade star test. What does this look like? Well, the closest thing we have here is this right here. And the answer is going to be H. You take the 48 and you split it into 40 and 8. Now, if you had no idea about any of this, an easy thing to do would be to substitute a number into all of these. I've already done 2, so let's just say 10. Let's say you had no idea what the answer was, but you said, you know what? I see a Y in all of these. I'm just going to say Y is 10. So let's say Y in this case. I'm going to switch colors just so we can kind of keep it in track. Let's say y equals 10, right? So if I were to say y equals 10, then my initial expression would be 10 times 48. So it needs to equal 480, right? So what if I put a 10 right there? 
So 10 times 40, that's going to be 400. And then if I were to add 8, no, that's going to equal 408. It's close, but not quite. What if I put a 10 right here? 10 times 4 is going to be 40. And then times that by 8, well, that's not quite. It's going to be 320. 40 times 8 is 320 because 4 times 8 is 32, and you're just going to add that 0. Hopefully this is going to work. I've already said this is my answer. Let's put our 10 in here. So uh, 10 times 40, I'm going to have to write that out because that's going to be kind of big, 400. And then 10 times 8 is going to be 80. There we go. Take my 400, take my 80, and I've got my 480. And let's just double check this down here. Let's say that's 10. Multiply that by 4. So that's going to be 40 plus 8. Nope. 48, way too small. So even if you're stuck and you don't know the distributive property or none of this makes any sense, just pick a number, plug it into Y, and just work out all the other problems and see which one is equal. That's always a solution. All right, so our final one for tonight is going to be a different property, and it's a little bit easier. It's called the commutative property, and it's helpful because sometimes you need to flip the order. And so let me go ahead and write that down here commutative, and you've been dealing with the commutative property probably down since first grade. It's called the ordering property, and it simply means 3 plus 4, or 3 times 4, let's say that, is the same as 4 times 3. The order of the factors don't matter. The order of the add-ins don't matter. Now, you cannot use a commutative property with subtraction or division. The order does matter there, and it really changes your answer. But with commutative property, it works for multiplication or addition. It's just the order. The order does not really matter. So how could I change the order of 30 divided by 3 plus x? Well, there's your order right there. So the answer is going to have you flip those two. So you've got 30 divided by x plus 3. So your answer is g. But... Um, I'm not too sure that, that we truly understand that without plugging in some numbers. So let's make x an easy number. Let's say x is 2. So let's plug in 2 into all of these numbers. So if I were to make x 2, then I'm going to say 30, and I'm going to write that down here, 30 divided by, and here's my original, 3 plus 2. I'm going to say x is 2. Well, 3 plus 2 is 5, so 30 divided by 5 is 6. Okay, so let's plug in 2, and let's see if I get 6. So if I were to take your 2 and put that right up there, it's going to be 5, because 3 plus 2 is 5, divided by 30. Now that's going to get you uh, 1 sixth, because it's going to be way too small. It's going to get you a decimal, so that's not it. If I were to put my 2 right here, I've got 30 divided by 5, and that's going to equal 6, because you see the 2 plus 3 right here is the same as the 3 plus 2. The order of the addition doesn't make any difference. If I were to change this to a 2, this on H, it's just going to be really weird. 3 divided by 10, or 3 divided by 3 is 1 tenth, so it's going to be 0 0.1 plus 2, which equals 2.1. That's just doesn't make any sense. And then finally, we've got a 2 right here. Let's see what we do here. We've got 30 divided by 3. So 30 divided by 3 is 10, plus 30 divided by 2, that's 15. That's, I don't even know where they came, came up with that. That doesn't make any sense. So your answer is uh, not going to be H, excuse me. It is going to be G. That is the only one that is left. So those are our four answers for this evening. Uh, just to review real quick, uh, let's see, we've got our uh, first, the one we just finished here, number 30, uh, was the last one we did. The first one we did was number 9, the answer was D. The second one was a little bit easier, the answer was 5, it was a free response. The third one, the answer was H, and number 16, in case you're keeping track at home. And the one we just finished was G for number 30, so come back. Tomorrow evening, and we will look at 